We started working on the Disease Surveillance Network initiative officially in 2007, but we'd actually been working in this area as early as 1999. We were looking at some of the trends. Uh, you know, our colleagues in Asia and Africa were mentioning some of the changes in the world that they were feeling we needed to respond to. Increased cross-border trade, greater mobility of people and animals. Um, well, more recently we see the changes from climate change. Back then we really didn't talk about that, but those kinds of very broad changes. Uh, increasing intensification of livestock production systems. Um, and the greater population density. And all of these were creating risks that our colleagues and our grantees were sensing. So we started to look at this question of how do we control the spread of diseases so that they don't become pandemics. Before 2003, and particularly uh, when H5N1 hit in 2005-2006, we really didn't have a very good sense about how people could work together better across not only borders, national borders, but also disciplines. One of the key components of the DSN initiative was to bring about a greater degree of collaboration between the animal health sector and the human health sector. It was a great privilege to be able to be a part of this and particularly to be able to work with so many committed uh, epidemiologists and public health professionals at the national level, at the local level, in the borders. It was a very, very exciting time to be there and a time when you could see every, uh, every interaction, information flowing and people responding. One of the things about pandemics is you can't really tell if you prevented a pandemic. So if you've been successful, you might not even know that you have been successful. But certainly the networks have helped to build trust, helped to strengthen communication systems, helped to strengthen both the institutions in which the people were embedded, as well as relationships across networks and, and borders and, and um, departments and divisions. Now people move very fast across the border, you see. And border is usually the place where disease can transfer easily. Now we have more than 15 border sites between Myanmar, Thailand, Thailand, Laos, Laos, Myanmar, Laos, uh, Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam, Vietnam, China. This is something already happened. There is no need for imagination. It's real. Infectious diseases are endemic by and large in developing countries. The new ones are likely to come more from developing countries than from developed countries. Uh, if you've got mutual trust across boundaries, um, you're, you're able to share information before they become official. At the time when you are suspecting, look, uh, I don't know what's going on, but I'm seeing this, what do you think? And then you, you investigate that jointly. But I think that there's more to global health than the global spread of disease. I think there's also the global spread of solutions and the globalization of solutions. And I do think that these self-organized sub-regional disease networks, surveillance networks, fill an important niche. And so I I'm very happy to hear what's happening, but there's more to do. There's clearly more to do. Rockefeller Foundation has probably showcased a lot of champions and heroes all across the world uh, based upon this idea of building trust, um, building the confidence of people to work in a very low resource setting to do incredibly heroic things. This takes personal passion, this takes intelligence, this takes commitment, and a lot of trust across borders, often in conflict. And um, so my 
you know, sense of pride is really on behalf of all the networks that I work with and all the people that lead those networks in the Middle East, uh, Africa, and Southeast Asia. In the Africa region, what our focus has been has uh, really been around um, instituting new networks within the fields of both One Health, disease surveillance, and global health diplomacy based on experiences that we've had in the early 90s within uh, Asia. So in Asia, for instance, we had the Mekong Basin Disease Surveillance Network. And that gave us some very, very concrete lessons in terms of how to deal across borders with the issue of disease surveillance. Rockefeller is well known because it creates institutions and things that uh, continue over time. And I think that in this context we have created institutions, but we, are, we have also created competences. We have been able to uh, get people trained, we have been able to create trainers. Uh, not only trainees, and we have been able to create and to support evidence. How do you get good evidence, scientific evidence? So it has a component that is scientific and at the same time it's a component that is more social in terms of building social capital, which is quite important for a foundation like this one, which is quite unique in health. I think we're better prepared to respond to outbreaks than we were 10 years ago. The kinds of threats, though, that we're going to see will continue to change and evolve, so we really can't be complacent. I think what we can learn is that in the past 10 years, establishing fundamental capabilities to be able to detect diseases early, better understanding of the ecological environment in which new pathogens are beginning to emerge, better understanding the dynamics of how people are moving across the world and across borders are really essential. We've started some great groundwork, but these trends are going to continue and they're going to change. And so it's very important that our networks are, be able, are able to both see those changes and then respond and adapt accordingly. Uh, the, the situation is different in the 21st century than it was in the 20th century. The threats are different, the risks are different, and I think that the contributions that we have made, with the, not only with the, fun, with the funds that we've put into it, but also with all the efforts of all people across many different continents, is really, um, has positioned us to tackle these threats well into the future. Mm -hmm.